events. Events uh, intrude on the best laid foreign policy plans of any president. And while you would like to be very proactive in foreign policy and say, here's my strategy, now I'm going to go implement it, um, things happen, you know, and, uh, and we saw with 9-11. I think we've seen now with the Arab Spring and President Obama's response to it um, that, so that often presidents find themselves reacting to what's happening in the world more than they would like to, um, and that that actually sometimes can come to dominate uh, a foreign policy. And so one question that would be interesting to ask, which isn't really the subject here, but that's sort of what is the next surprise going to be that's going to force a president to make a big foreign policy turn? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sincerely hoping it's not going to be another attack on the United States, but it could be having something having to do with cyber power. It could uh, be something having to do uh, with a different part of the world, uh, which uh, isn't on our radar screen right now. Um, so with those two introductory remarks, I'm just going to make five brief observations about Republicans and foreign policy, uh, our topic here. The first is uh, Bush versus Obama, which, you know, Bush versus Obama has has really dominated in many ways the first couple of years of discussion of Republicans and, and foreign policy or, or foreign policy period. And one of the things that's frequently observed, and I think rightly, is that there's been a surprising degree, given the um, rhetoric in the 2008 campaign, a surprising degree of continuity between President Bush and President Obama's foreign policy. When you look at things like take Guantanamo Bay and the detention, detention facility there. Obviously, President Obama intended to close it. He hasn't been able to do that. In fact, it's still open, still contains a good number of people. Counterterrorism operations is a clear uh, area of continuity where President Obama has not only really continued the Bush era policies, but he's expanded those policies. Uh, he's sort of doubled down, in a sense, on things like drone strikes and so forth. Uh, and you could point to basic strategy on Iran, uh, Iraq. In Iraq, you have the really remarkable situation where the Obama administration is, in fact, using Bush-era policy as kind of a cover for what it's doing, which is withdrawing on the, the timeline set by the Bush administration. So there really has, I mean, for I think for any casual observer, uh, the degree of continuity is, uh, is quite striking. And the continuity has not just been in activities or policies, it's been in the strategic doctrines, which is something my, my uh, good friend and colleague, William Bowden, pointed out on foreignpolicy.com the other day, was that, in fact, some of the Bush administration's doctrines, such as preemption or democracy promotion, have been carried forward enthusiastically by President Obama. Um, where President Obama has sought to strongly depart from President Bush's policies, ironically enough, is where he's had, uh, in many ways, the least success. Whether it's been on the Middle East peace process, where he, he wanted to show a strong focus on that from the beginning, and, and frankly, there's little to show for it. Uh, engagement with rogue, uh, or whatever you want to call them, states. Uh, you remember President Obama talked about uh, having a chat with uh, President Ahmadinejad of Iran and uh, various other people. Climate change, uh, the Russia reset, and so forth. And, um, you know, the, the things that the administration will cite as sort of its successes in this upcoming campaign season, uh, the death of Osama bin Laden, the death of Anwar al um the downfall of Gaddafi, uh, are in many ways uh, emblematic of those policies which were continued, but also they don't really constitute a foreign policy. I mean, they're, they're remarkable events, but they don't really kind of tie together in, in, uh, in terms of a foreign policy uh, strategy or a national security strategy. In many ways, I'm inclined to think that the biggest difference between the two presidents uh, is personal diplomacy. President Obama is more popular in the polls, no doubt, around the world. I mean, that's a clear difference between the two of them. <clears throat> but, it's, but it is true, and, and surprisingly so, that President Bush had much better personal relations with world leaders than President Obama has managed to cultivate. I don't know why this is. I'm not a, you know, sort of, I don't, I don't know President Obama personally, and I'm not a psychologist. Um, but those personal ties which President Bush cultivated with European leaders, South American leaders, Asian leaders, uh, even Vladimir Putin, um, are, were essential to, uh, I wish to say, are essential to foreign policy. I mean, I think this is a an aspect of foreign policy which gets uh, insufficient attention probably in uh, sort of academic study, but just that personal ability to call up world leaders, to uh, speak to world leaders, to deal with them on their own terms is something which seems to elude uh, President Obama in a mysterious way. So how do we explain this surprising continuity between the two presidents? Um, I guess the way I would explain it is to say that, you know, while presidents change, Really, the problems in the world don't change on our electoral timetable, 
and American interests also don't change as one president uh, changes to another uh, to another administration. Um, so while you know, close down Gu Guantanamo was a nice campaign bumper sticker. When you actually sit down at the policymaking table and try to figure out how to do that, obviously it gets much more complicated, and the president may find that his options aren't uh, that palatable, which I suspect is what happened with President Obama. It, to me, this should actually be encouraging to both Republicans and Democrats that this is the case, because you know, it always used to be people said foreign policy was nonpartisan or was uh, was apolitical. Uh, and I think that we should all hope that we don't have wild swings necessarily uh, in the way that we pursue our interests around the world, because uh, the the message that would send to the world and to to both allies and foes, I think, would not not be the right message, because uh, it suggests that we whatever we're doing now will be different in four to eight years. So that's my first observation.